Hello once again, continuing our series on the South African conflict and uh, another book written about the uh, reconnaissance commando by one of the top operators. So it's a autobiogra autobiographical book and it's this one, Journey Without Boundaries by Colonel Andre Deirdrex, who is known as Deities. And uh, Deities uh, took selection in 1974, passed, and um, talks about the arduous process. Uh, it was in the Swartberg mountain area uh, at that time before they moved up into Natal. And um, then goes into the uh, continuation training the usual um, harassments on the para course, which I, I've mentioned before, the, the, the para bats um, insisted that the, the guys went through um, a, a kind of rev period where they, they were beasted basically for a week or so before they were allowed anywhere near um, a parachute harness. Uh, then um, one of the schools he attended was the uh, diving school at Simmonstown run by the South African Navy and uh, like with the Parabats there's a bit of inter-service rivalry the Navy uh, thought that it was the exclusive uh, diving with their exclusive province uh, because the only army guys um, that were being trained as divers were from special forces so they gave them a really hard time things like doing uh, PT in um, wetsuits and stuff like this um, you know which is a suffocating experience but it, it passes the course and then go progresses to the attack divers course which is the uh, with the rebreathers which is the the method uh, mainly used by special forces such as the seals or SPS for ship attack and things like that so uh, it, it passes that he goes on uh, operations the, the big op at the time was savannah in angola takes part in that and then around about this time uh, as i've mentioned in uh, other reviews uh, the recce commando uh, split into three groups and um, deities because of his diving um, qualifications was sent to what became four recce and uh, but unfortunately, he suffered from terrible seasickness aboard the strike craft and the Zodiacs, and so was transferred to uh, Durban to one recce, and uh, started working there again. Operations, um, and one of the things that they did was operate in Rhodesia as D squadron of the, the Rhodesian SAS, and. Uh, the, uh, they did a lot of parachuting in Rhodesia. A lot of the insertion they did was by parachute. They gained uh, a lot of operational experience. So coming back from that, um, he went on an advanced uh, reconnaissance course run by Chris Schulenberg from the Salute Scouts up at Fort Rev. Now, Chris Schulenberg was a legend in Southern Africa. He was... Um, the first uh, to be awarded the Grand Cross of Valor in Rhodesia, which is the equivalent to the Victoria Cross or the Congressional Medal of Honor. Only two were awarded throughout the whole Bush War. Um, the, the other one went to Graham Wilson from the SAS, uh, the Phantom Major. So uh, following that course, uh, uh, Deities became very, very much enamoured of the small teams concept that uh, surely um, was the, the proponent of two-man reconnaissance uh, deep into uh, enemy territory. And uh, but there was resistance within uh, the recce to doing this for many reasons, political and so on, and uh, a bit of unit jealousy. Well, which unit was going to have have the small teams? And so on, but around about the same time, they um, formed uh, D40 uh, section of pseudo operations, 
and he uh, transferred to that. And he went up to Fireki, selected an African part, uh, Nevis, and um, they worked together in what became Project Barnacle uh, under Neil Creel, who was from the reconnaissance group of the Salute Scouts originally, and uh, people like Tim Callow, who was a, a scouts operator. And um, they formed the Long Range Reconnaissance Wing of Project Barnacle. Um, doing the deep, deep reconnaissance uh, prior to uh, any kind of strikes that they did and attacks. Um, so there was a lot of operations, um, a lot of training, specialised training. He attended uh, free fall training, both uh, Halo and Hey Ho uh, at uh, Duku Duku. Uh, and on the same course he was training at, John Murphy, an American, who had served in both uh, Rhodesian SAS and Salute Scouts, uh, was killed on that course while, while doing the people. Um, he transferred over and was, was um, in the uh, South African Reconnaissance Commando. So uh, there were changes in Barnacle. Uh, Neil Creel left, uh, Charles Nadia took over, um, and then eventually. Um, it was decided, Special Forces Headquarters decided to move the small teams or long range wing from Barnacle back into mainstream Special Forces and um, they were moved to Five Recky at Palavola. And uh, they did uh, a lot of operations into the neighbouring countries, they were involved. Um, on the attack on the ANC facilities in Harare, um, basically similar to what they were doing in um, in Barnacle, uh, but on, under the umbrella of Five Recky. So uh, he finished his Special Forces career uh, running the Special Forces Training School uh, as a colonel. So it was a, an illustrious career. Um, he, he's spoken of in many of the books about um, the Recce Commando and uh, praised very, very highly. Oh, by the way, um, during uh, uh, early part of the career, he, he was commissioned, uh, so became an officer. Uh, he had originally served as uh, an enlisted. So, um, fascinating story by uh, a very modest uh, account, and um, it's, it's uh, a real insight particularly into the small teams concept and the long range reconnaissance aspect of Barnacle because a lot of emphasis was given to the more kind of um, assassination slash kidnap type operations that Barnacle did. But uh, the long range record was more of a, um, a traditional or orthodox special force uh, uh, role for the for that section. So all in all, um, great book.